Hey everyone, I am back with uh, a continuation of the Perspective Grid. Uh, a few questions came in that I wanted to kind of tackle and uh, I wanted to also just kind of expand upon what we were doing last week as it got me thinking about some other things in the grid that I think uh, might be helpful if you are newer to Flame and or just kind of haven't uh, experienced all of these features quite yet even if you're very seasoned and experienced. Uh, this is a good clip because it shows what I want to highlight, which is that uh, the inside of the screen is moving quite a bit and that can be quite annoying and hard for the tracker to kind of stay fixed on. So uh, this is a perfect situation for me to go over what I want to show, which will be kind of a new um, way to use a perspective grid if you uh, haven't really done this um, in a while. Okay, so let's just refresh. Uh, if you haven't watched the previous video, I recommend maybe checking that one out first because a lot of what I'm doing is uh, based upon what I did last week. This um, will be very familiar though if you did watch it as I'm going to go through some of the same steps just so we can kind of uh, see why this technique of what we did last week may not work. So I have a perspective grid, nothing new there. I'm going to snap and hit F8. So this will fail, and this also brings me up to why I wanted to do this uh, today, is to explain the auto update reference just a little bit better. Uh, and this clip does a really good job of that because what's happening is we're sampling this walk sign from the first frame, and it will continue to look for this pattern on every frame that follows, and it will not update the reference frame uh, as long as it, you know, is continuing to see what it was originally snapped to. The reason why this will fail is because eventually we're going to lose that walk signal and the tracker can no longer find that pattern. So when I have this off and I hit analyze, you will see it stop. Uh, it stopped because it noticed uh, a change between the two and it can no longer find that frame. I didn't explain that perfectly, but that's the general idea. So that doesn't work. If I hit auto update reference on, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to sample this frame every time. So when it sees a new frame, it will um, it always kind of take a snapshot and then look for that frame on the next frame and keep snapping. This is great. It'll make it through the tracker uh, or through the sequence, but it will do so with a little less accuracy. So if we snap and do this, you'll see that it looks pretty good from, you know, first view. But when we actually go to check it, um, and again, this is one of those situations where I dragged out the axis and we have Z data already in there so just make sure you zero that out we're going to parent this under the perspective grid i'm going to change it to 2d and i'm going to invert it uh, let me hide the icons with the i key and now when i play it you'll see a pop at some point i presume there you go so as it was snapping uh you can see that it was yes it was updating it was making its way through the track but it was also coming in with um some ir uh, irregular uh, data and it was certainly not giving us the track that we wanted. Could I make it work? Yes, probably. But uh, we're here to find other ways. So we're gonna drag out another perspective grid. I'm gonna turn the icons back on. Uh, let's go to the first frame. This part never changes. We're gonna set this. Oh, and I should mention, let me just kind of do one more thing. If you wanted to be stubborn and just kind of manually snap your way through this track, uh, we could do it that way as well. It still won't work, but I'm happy to kind of show why. So let's say we snap here and we know that there's gonna be some major changes. Uh, let's say we kind of analyze until it stops. And then I'm like, oh, that, that didn't work. Let me snap this frame. So now it looks for this frame. That's good in theory, except for the fact that it's gonna kind of keep changing. So we're gonna have to do this kind of a lot, which is kind of a pain. And then our accuracy might start to break and a few other things. So 
let me even let's do this so that yeah we're gonna stop i'm gonna snap here i'm gonna analyze i'm gonna have to snap again analyze and then you know we made it through let's check this i believe this will still also be a problem um but i've known to be wrong about these things so i'm gonna hit f4 turn off the icons let's hit play yeah there you go so we're still getting a bunch of jitter as we're hitting these frames that are uh, ch changing and so the pattern inside is screwing up the perspective grid um, again, this is all solvable, fixable, and don't get me wrong, just like last week, I could start to occlude the inside of this with another garbage mask, so we could do something that looked like, um, I'm not going to do it this way, but just so you can see it, we could have a garbage mask that tracks the outside, like this, and then outside of this grid, we could have a garbage mask that is subtracting the inside, like this. And that could very well be our track. The problem with this is it's gonna take longer than the way we're gonna end up doing it today uh, because I have to keyframe and track this. I have to deal with this. And it's uh, one more step than I wanna do if I'm in a rush and just being, um, I don't know, lazy is not the word, uh, efficient, I guess is probably the best way to describe it. So. Do this one more time, just setting the grid. Again, uh, trying to keep everything as straight as possible. Uh, we are going to use a garbage mask, but just one. And I'm going to drag out a shape that is just on the border between the black and kind of the mustard uh, yellow casing. Um, it does not have to be perfect, but it does help if you are finding that area of contrast. So let me just hide the grid for now. We're just gonna focus on the garbage mask and then we're gonna go into the add points mode with the A key and uh, I'm going to drag out some softness. So I'm gonna hold shift and I'm dragging out just beyond uh, where the metal case is. And then I'm also going to drag in on the interior until we get to the screen. Uh, so A key again, add points, hold shift, and now we'll drag to just about here. So now we have uh, a mat that has just a feathering on both sides. So that's all we need. And I'm gonna turn the grid back on. We're going to go into tracking. Uh, if you see me snap now and I hit F8, we're seeing the whole contents of the garbage mask. And as you notice, it doesn't even have the feathering. It really just is looking at the core points that I set. Uh, what you may or may not have noticed before is this uh, include softness um, option, which when I do this and hit snap, you'll see that now it is grabbing the um, the gradient that we had set from the core mat uh, on both the exterior and the interior. And this is all the perspective grid will look at when it tracks. I'm gonna keep auto update reference off because I'm really just seeing this first frame and that's not gonna change. So uh, I think that's totally fine to uh, use. We don't need to snap or anything after this first frame and we'll just hit analyze and see what happens. Uh, so now it's not um, sourcing any of this animation on the inside. When I drag out no, um, the clip and I invert it and stabilize it and hit F4, let's hide the grid and hit play. Oh, sorry, I have my garbage mask on. Now we hit play you will see that we are uh, pretty rock solid. So um, what I like about this approach, it's cleaner, it's simpler, it's faster, it's more efficient. Uh, you're taking advantage of something that Flame has built in and uh, it's not a workaround or anything like that. It really is designed um, to kind of be used for situations like that or um, if you're 
doing a screen it has a lot of reflection um, but you like the edges this is kind of uh, a good way to do that without having to draw more masks so I hope that helps and I hope that clears up a little bit more about the perspective grid um, I think I'm also going to end up doing uh, a class on the corner pin approach to all of this because if you're coming from other applications corner pinning is still kind of a big thing that you may or may not be used to and while it does have a purpose in flame and uh, we certainly use it I don't think it's kind of our go-to anymore and there's so many other ways to get around it so uh, I think it's important that we acknowledge it I'll show it I'll kind of give you the use cases that I have for it but we won't spend a ton of time on it as we have uh, some really cool ways to, to kind of go around that. Uh, again, let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything else you would like me to expand upon. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.